Well, hello everyone. This is Leslie Jufless with Trading Live Online and welcome to your daily five. Today, um, we're going to talk about this is for October 25th, 2022. A lot's going on in the markets. And so the first thing we're going to look at is where did this um, bounce uh, come from? Where, what is the level that is the important level to be watching right now? I'm going to use the S&P 500 to show this to you. And so now where do we go after we've had this strong bounce? It's held up for a couple of days. Um, where are some potential targets that the market might go to? So I'm going to show those um, to you as well. And we're going to look at some differences in who's leading the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones Industrials. Uh, we'll take a look at some charts and uh, see if we can determine which one is stronger, which might then lead you to where you want to be. There is a tendency around the midterm elections for the markets to rally. So we might be starting to see that tendency start to play out right now. Um, after we look at the indexes, then we'll take a look at a couple of individual symbols, GE, IBM, and Schlumberger, SLB. So let's get started. So let's start with this chart. This is the SPX on a weekly chart. And if you follow me on your daily five, you've probably seen this chart before because I've been showing it for a long time, even before the beginning of this, um, this last year, I've been showing this chart. I was showing the cell patterns up here and we've been following this move to the downside. So let's sort of update where we are right now. Well, this is using the March 2020 low and we're bringing the retracement um, from that level using the high uh, of 2021 or excuse me 2022 earlier this year and so you can see that the market as it was coming to the downside it got to the 382 retracement uh, and then had a rally it dipped a little below it and came up but we've got this trend line coming down here and this is one that I'm just keeping on my charts uh, for now. This was extended across using this point um, from late March, early April of this year. And once it made that point, then I could take the high there and extend it across. So this rally that we saw in June, it came up and it tested uh, that trend line and also some other areas. This is a called a 127 extension pattern. I'm taking the length of this swing and extending it to the upside by Fibonacci ratio of 1.27. That also was coming in uh, right about the trend line. And you can see here, this was a support line that was broken and the market retested that as well. So there was quite a bit of resistance um, when the market got up to this level in uh, late summer in August and then had a decline from from that level. Well, this retracement now, this 0.50, that's a well-watched uh, retracement by many, many traders. Um, and so the market bounced off that, which is not really too surprising because it's such a well-watched level, but it also corresponded with, if you look back here from 2020, where those highs were, the market had this steep uh, decline and it had like a V spike type of reversal back up. And as it made the new high here, it came back down and tested. And for several weeks, it stayed in this consolidation. Once it broke out of that, you see this uh, long bullish candle to the upside. Um, that's where the market then continued um, the leg up to the all time highs. And so that's also corresponding with that 0 0.50 retracement. So this is going to be an extremely important level to watch. If it breaks, then we're going to be looking down around the 618 retracement. And you can see that corresponds with some of these lows here. There's a previous gap to the downside, a few other things going on there. If that does occur, then I'll be monitoring uh, the price uh, to the downside. The question a lot of people are asking is, is the bear market over, you know, with this rally? When everybody we're asking it with this rally, with this rally, with this rally, now with this rally. Um, 
I think that remains to be seen. And we know now that bear market rallies can be very, very convincing. But then they also hit a point where they tend to fail. I don't think we've seen a capitulation point yet. We had uh, an extreme on the sentiment readings uh, down around these lows. They were very, very, very bearish, a lot of fear in the market, but I don't think it was like a capitulation type of move where everybody is out of the pool. Up here, everybody was in the pool. And so that remains to be seen, but I believe if we start to break these lows, we're, we are going to be see, seeing more decline in, in the market. So for now, um, we can, uh, look at a couple of things using some smaller time frames. I'm going to go look at a daily chart now of the S&P and the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ. As we're um, going through the indexes, I just want you to kind of notice a couple of things. And I'll, I'll show you what I'm noticing on here. First of all, look at the NASDAQ, um, you know, how far the price has come up here. Now, there is a, there is a, a, a low here. And then the market rallies and it makes a lower low, comes up, rallies again, and makes a higher low here. So this potentially is an inverse head and shoulder pattern. Now the market, you can get downward sloping necklines, you can get horizontal necklines, you can get upward sloping necklines. But if the market rallies up to around this level and then finds um, some resistance there, doesn't exceed this low, but just sort of pulls back off of it, then we may have a horizontal trend line. If uh, the market comes up close to it, does the pullback and then shoots through, then it might be a little bit of a downward sloping trend line. Now, what would change my mind completely on that is if the, the market reversed from somewhere in this level before exceeding this high, reverses uh, and does such a deep retracement that the pattern is no longer potentially there. But so look at the NASDAQ here and you can see, you know, just about how far it's rallied off of those lows. Now the NASDAQ did a 618 retracement. It did a deeper retracement than what we just looked at on the S&P. Now the RSI was showing some, um, some divergence, some bullish divergence here, however, it's not showing us yet a lot of strength uh, longer term. So we wanna be keeping an eye on that and see if any further rallies to the upside improves the RSI overall. Now look at the Dow Jones Industrial in comparison. Look at how much stronger this is. It's, it's, it's very much stronger. I don't know if that's a good technical term. It's just very much stronger. Um, but look at the um, the test of the lows. So the Dow did not come down and make those new lows. It kind of held, just kind of tipped through it and then, then really took off. And the RSI here is looking stronger than it was on the NASDAQ. Uh, so this is looking like this was a double bottom type of a formation. You can almost use that as sort of a rectangle and we could do kind of a measured move with that, taking the height of this and pro projecting it up and it would have more to go on the upside. There's a gap area right up here around this 32,000. So I would be keeping an eye on that to see how the price reacts to that. Is it Does it find a lot of resistance and then just totally turn around or does it just sort of stall there and then continue up that would certainly be a sign of strength so now we're looking at the um, SPX again now this is on a daily chart and you can see the difference between the NASDAQ the first one which weaker looking than the S&P much weaker looking than the Dow Jones Industrials so we sort of have the Goldilocks here of, of the indexes, but the S&P also looks to be an inverse head and shoulder pattern. This would be the left shoulder here, the right shoulder. It looks as though this may be the neckline up here. So we could take a measured move and move that up. And I think that, you know, this level up around the 4,000 to 4,100 level, uh, I think that is probably if it gets going to the upside is going to be um, uh, an area to watch and can even exceed that a bit. The measured move, I think, would come up closer to 4,150. So now let's just take a look at a couple of symbols. So my chart sort of moved over here. I'm not sure 
not sure why I'm sure Rachel will help me <laughs> with this. She'll make it look really good on the video. Um, but look at GE. <clears throat> look at how much stronger GE is. This is what I mean by that gap. Notice here how when the price got up to the gap this first time here, it found resistance and fell away from it. And then the next time up, look what it did. It just had this kind of small little quiet pause and then kind of blasted up to the upside. So the RSI is looking much stronger on this. So um, as I mentioned, the Dow Jones Industrial is the stronger index. So you might want to be looking at um, some of the symbols in there. So let's look at a couple of more. But this is IBM. Look at IBM. Um, this is even ahead of the head of the Dow. Um, this is a very strong move here to the upside. And as, as I was mentioning, you know, breaking those lows that were made um, earlier in uh, this month, uh, if those were to break, that would really take a lot of people by surprise and I think be more of a decline. But for right now, on some of these symbols, especially in the Dow, you're seeing a lot of strength. And through the S&P, you're also going to be seeing symbols with strength. But since the NASDAQ right now is kind of lagging behind, I think these are where you want to be looking for uh, some tradable um, symbols. And uh, these moves right up like this, you might want to make, wait for a pause, some type of retracement, retracement pattern, and then uh, consider, you know, where your risk is. So let's look at one more. And Schlumberger, so in the energy and oil equipment, and uh, you know there is a lot of strength right now. A couple of weeks ago on my weekly market setups that I do every week for subscribers, and please come. If you email me, I'll send you a, um, a coupon that you can try for two weeks if you like. Um, but uh, I talked about on the XLE, the ETF, there was a certain... Uh, place like it was like right kind of right about here that the market was either going to turn over and come down but if it exceeded that level then it was likely going to be a stronger move to the upside and Schlumberger looks even stronger than uh, the ETF XLE so a lot of strength uh, in this right now the RSI is looking strong the uh, scooter of stock charts is looking strong. Look at the volume with this. And again, it might need a bit of a pullback. Um, and of course, look through other symbols where you're gonna find similar strength. Well, that's it for me today. I'd like to thank you for watching. And I also would like to say thank you for those of you that that uh, stop by regularly and watch uh, my videos. I really appreciate that. And uh, I always try and answer any comments, even mean ones, I'll answer them. I would, I mean, I won't give you maybe a lot of answer, but <laughs> I'll put something in there. So I hope everybody uh, has a great week. And remember, we have probably an upside bias here in the markets right now for at least a little bit. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.